Welcome. My name is Christopher Schmidt. I'm a bioimage analyst in Florian Lux Group at the Fondazione Human Technopol, and I act as a substitute of Matthias Arzt, who is the core developer of the tool I'm going to talk about. I will talk about LabKit, a labeling and segmentation toolkit for big image data. In recent years, new and powerful microscopy techniques such as selective plane illumination, microscopy, SPIM, have given us an unprecedented view of biology. Here I show you the development of uh, Crustacea acquired with SPIM over multiple days. It's a very large data set with a ter seven terabyte in size. We want to extract quantitative data from this very rich uh, data set. And one step is in this workflow is the segmentation of the image data where we turn the image into a binary mask where we split the pixels into foreground and background. As you can see from this simple crop, there's variability in the data in the objects, but also between objects. And you can also imagine variability between data sets. So simple features such as intensity for intensity thresholding are often too inaccurate. In recent years, development of novel uh, <clears throat> image analysis approaches has focused primarily on developing new deep learning approaches. However, these approaches are very hungry in ground truth data. <clears throat> and where this is not feasible since this uh, ground truth labeling is very tedious and time consuming, classical machine learning still plays a vital role. There are many tools in the bioimage analysis sphere that <clears throat> address this problem, for instance, elastic and Kupath. And in Fiji, we have uh, trainable vector segmentations. How do these approaches work? <clears throat> they, you get the input image and apply different filters to enhance specific image features, such as uh, texture, edges, and so on in the images. Uh, uh, ground truth labeling then is used to uh, acquire a training set, which is then fed into a uh, random forest classifier, usually in order to achieve a pixel uh, classification, thereby a segmentation. In Fiji, we have trainable vector segmentation. However, it was hard to apply on very large 3D volumes. And that's where LabKit comes in. LabKit is big, based on Big Data Viewer and Inclip2 and allows the visualization and interaction with very large volumes. It combines Big Data Viewer with a labeling toolkit, a random forest pixel classification that is uh, optimized for large data sets. It's GPU accelerated. It can be recorded with macro can be executed on a high performance computing cluster. And we also have a bridge to Imaris to, for visualization and import export labeling. So what are the core features? We have our labeling toolkit where we can draw on the image non-destructively. Uh, this you can potentially use for creating dense manual labels. However, true, true power is using sparse manual labels with very little ground truth data you are able to achieve uh, uh, automatic segmentation using random forest pixel classification. And with this, we are able to, from different imaging modalities, such as fluorescent microscopy or bright field microscopy, achieve uh, very rapidly uh, useful segmentations. And now I would like to go into the practical demo. I have a Fiji where I activated LabKit and Klitsch uh, update sites. Klitsch is for the GPU acceleration, and then you can call lab kit from the plugins menu of Fiji. Now I'm going to demonstrate to you the core features of lab kit. For this, I'm going to go ahead and open an XML HDF5 dataset uh, to profit from the core performance gains of Big Data Viewer. Here you see the main interface of, of lab kit with Big Data Viewer here as this black rectangle. We can adjust the, the contrast quickly to visualize our images. And we can interact with the big data viewer using the usual mouse and keyboard interactions. We can scroll through the volume by using the mouse wheel. We can pan the image using and holding the right mouse button. And we can rotate along the mouse pointer using the left mouse uh, button. Um, then we can also zoom uh, in and out using the up and down arrow keys. And for rotation, I actually prefer to use the left and right um, um, arrow keys. So I can do that by selecting an axis, pressing X, Y, or Z, and then using the left and right arrow keys for rotation. And then one nifty feature is to use shift and then select an axis of rotation, which allows us to have a quick 90 degree rotation which then really gives us a much better feeling and also a very fast feeling of the 3D volume here. 
Good. Then we want to do labeling in our uh, lab kit. Uh, for this, we have on top this labeling interface with the pencil as the most important tool where we can just quickly draw um, on our canvas. These uh, labelings are non-destructive. We can adjust the brush size to uh, make uh, more quicker labels here. Uh, and then we can obviously adjust any labels with the eraser um, and also delete entire connected components. Um, but with this, we could achieve a dense manual label, but the important uh, key feature here is the automatic segmentation using the random forest pixel classifier. For this, we have our labeling classes here on the left side. And uh, here we can change the color to make it um, uh, nicer. And we can also change the naming here for our classes. And you can uh, then basically draw um, uh, there are ground truth labels in into the to the image, and what we recommend to do is really draw um, various with a thin brush in these images here. For instance, in this uh, nuclei, we want to draw from the edge to along the image and really try to encompass the variability that you find within your image. So, if you have different intensities here, really try to label as many different intensities between different nuclei. Also, if there is variability within these objects, right, then you should, this ground truth label should encompass that. Another option is to uh, specifically label the edges of your object. This is also something good. Uh, and, and the same goes for your background. Draw thin labels along the edges of the objects and particularly if uh, objects that are touching that you would like to separate, you would draw your ground truth labels along those to uh, basically reflect this. And once you are uh, ready and happy with your ground truth labeling, we can go ahead with the pixel classification. We press add the pixel classifier and um, um, what this basically is, this um, um, we can go ahead and look into the settings and we see that we have um, a list of sigmas here available. This is basically before most of those filters, we apply a Gaussian blur in order to represent different resolution levels of where our image features are present in, in our image because sometimes they can be along uh, smaller um, uh, distances and also over la larger distances. And this sigma should be a, a range of uh, sigmas that are in the range of the sizes of your objects. So if you have very large objects, your sigma should also reflect it. Um, and then you have here a list of basic filters, which uh, basically enhance specific image features that are then used for this pixel classification. And once you're happy with your selection, usually the default parameters here work quite well. Uh, we can go ahead, close this and uh, start the training. And once the training is finished, we see that there's a course segmentation available. Um, you can also toggle on and off with this either segmentation or either the labelings. This is also an important feature. And then you might notice that uh, the segmentation is not optimal as, as we can witness here, right? Then we just add more labels in uh, these instances where our labeling has not been really uh, very successful. Um, and improve our labeling and with, with basically this we can uh, improve uh, the uh, segmentation, this automatic pixel classification iteratively. Um, at some point in this iterative process, we will arrive at a labeling and um, classifier setting that is um, satisfying and achieves a good enough um, segmentation. Then at this point, we can save our labelings under labeling, save labeling. We can also uh, save the classifier to use it, for instance, in a macro. Uh, we can also save the segmentation results as a TIFF or HD5, as well as uh, the probability map as TIFF and as HD5. And what this gives you is that the result would be a binary mask of, of your um, uh, segmentation, and the probability would then be a 32-bit uh, image with a range from 0 to 1 reflecting the probability of 
uh, a specific pixel belonging to uh, the uh, specific class in that sense, which you could use for further thresholding. Another neat feature of LabKit is that we can export the result of the automatic segmentation as a new labeling. Um, let me demonstrate this to you by going for lab labeling, import bitmap, and selecting the segmentation result. I can import that now as a new labeling class. Once, once this labeling class becomes available here as a new um, labeling, we can then turn off the old labelings and the old segmentation, and then we can interact with this labeling as before. And then we can just simply select uh, our labelings in order, uh, our labeling in toolkit basically, in order to curate this. And then this could serve as a curated result of the segmentation, uh, which then could, for instance, serve as ground truth for deep learning. As I have demonstrated to you now, LabKit is a very powerful and also easy to use tool in order to generate from very little ground truth data uh, automatic segmentations. These automatic segmentations we can feed again into LabKit in order to create it. And then we can use that for directly in Fiji these results to, to measure uh, quantitative uh, in information or to use it for tracking and so on. But we can also feed it into deep learning approaches for um, as ground truth data. And with this, I would like to close. And thank you for your attention. I want to thank particularly and mention Matthias Arzt, who is the core developer, Sharan Deschamps, who is uh, most important and vital for driving this project home. Me and Sharan will be available for questions and in Gathertown. Tobias Peach uh, provided the big data viewer and very important developments there. Deborah Schmidt was an important developer and Robert Hase um, provided Klitsch. Uh, and I want to thank Pavel Tomanchak and of course Florian Luke for hosting this. Thank you.